So how many people would like to experience greater levels of love, happiness, and success? Anybody like to do that? So here are a little, some deeper questions. So why do you think some people um, achieve great success and why some other people struggle, get stuck, uh, and can't get out of their own way? And why is it that you think, or what do you think separates someone who is consistently inspired and driven as compared to someone who gets excited for a week or a month or a season and then fizzles, uh, fades, and then gives up. Why do you think there is a difference? Because if the words of the Declaration of Independence are true, that all men are created equal, that we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, among them our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, why is there such a difference? You know? If the, if the words of the Bible are true, that we're all created in the image and likeness of God, that we are the temple of the living God, that the kingdom of God is within us, that we are the light of the world, that we should, shall do the things that Jesus has done and even greater, you know, what is the thing that holds us back from experiencing and creating and attracting the better life that we are seeking? I would say that that thing in a word is ourselves, but um, we'll expand on that a little bit. You know, I think it's important for us to look at our beliefs and our mindsets around what we think success is, because the way that we see success and how we approach it plays a huge in influence in how we experience it. And so I think sometimes in our culture, we develop uh, mindsets and ideas about things that are just not either helpful, but are even harmful to us in terms of our own self-worth and self-esteem as it relates to levels of success that it can affect these um, uh, myths and ideas and negative beliefs, you know, can really impact our ability to um, achieve and succeed and rise and overcome things. You know, according to Tommy Baker, he said that there are four myths and uh, four falsehoods about success that we buy into that actually make success harder for ourselves. And so the first myth about success, he says, is we believe that success is like a highlight reel, uh, reel film that we just see all the great stuff. We see the Hollywood award shows. We see all these pictures of people on Instagram and Facebook on their yachts traveling all over, doing amazing uh, and stunning things. We see sports shows where people are hitting home runs in the bottom of the ninth. And, it, and we think that success is all that big stuff, that highlight real stuff. And we look at all that and you think, man, my life stinks. That, and we think that for success for ourselves, we have to make a million dollars. We have to do big and great things because that's what success is. Success is really, really big, big stuff. Highlight real stuff. The second myth he says that isn't helpful is uh, believing that we become overnight successes. That believing that we could turn around, change our lives, go from rags uh, to riches, from zero to 60, you know, that our lives can change instantaneously like a genie uh, granting our wish. You know, so many successful people uh, like Steve Jobs, like Tom Clancy, the author Ray Kroc of McDonald's fame, so many people say that this whole idea of overnight success is not healthy and it's absolutely not true. My favorite quote by uh, actor Eddie Cantor, he said, uh, it took me 20 years to become an overnight success. You know, that all this stuff we think is overnight, it really, really is not. But we buy into that and we believe it. We want a quick, fast, overnight success. Third thing he says is waiting for the right time. You know, I'll start, you know, when the summer comes or I'll start at the beginning, you know, for, for New Year's or I'll start when all my ducks are in a row. I'll start when this happens or when I do that or achieve this or have that. And he said, what it leads to this waiting for the right time, waiting for the perfect time, it, it just leads to procrastination and often never getting uh, started or sometimes never completing. And the final myth about success, he says, is that we expect everything that we want to succeed to go as smoothly and as easily as we planned. How many people ever had something not go how you planned it? Anybody? Okay. Yeah, but the funny thing is we start with these high expectations that we're going to do all these great things, and it's great to a certain extent, but when things don't go the way we plan, you know, sometimes, you know, we just think something's wrong. It's bad. This isn't going to work. I've messed up. We're ready to, to jump ship. You know, just because the results or the initial results didn't measure up to the expectation that we had. And so he said these four myths and ideas about um, what success is and how to achieve it actually makes it harder for us 
You know, and we develop certain patterns of starting getting excited, then kind of waning and giving up, and then six months later, reigniting the same thing, promising ourselves we're going to follow through this time, and it just kind of keeps that, that cycle, and we can't understand why we're not succeeding, and we tend to feel bad about ourselves, and you know, we don't feel good about ourselves. And so to move, to experience greater levels of success, we need to reframe our mindset about what we think success is and what success looks like and how we approach success. Because the truth is, success is a journey. It's not a one-time thing. It is a process that takes time. It takes energy and effort. It takes patience and learning and adapting and facing the challenges, the inevitable adversity that is just a part of the process. And especially, it, we measure success not by comparing ourselves to others, but by what brings us joy. You know, it's an important thing um, for you know, achieving our goals is really to look at some of the core beliefs and myths that we tell ourselves about success and what it means. And so what would you say right now? Think of a goal that you want to achieve in your life. What would you say is holding you back the most in achieving or attracting or creating that goal? And to really look at it and ask yourself, you know, is there something about an unhealthy belief I might be holding about success and what it means that might be holding me back? Because sometimes we say we believe things, but we really don't believe it. We like to believe it, but we really at the core level don't believe it. Let me give you an example. We all say we believe that money can't buy happiness. We all agree, right? We think, does money buy it? We would all say no. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger put it this way. He said, money doesn't make you happier. Right now I have $50 million, but I was just as happy when I had $48 million. <laughs> we say money can't buy happiness, but every one of us wants to think, hmm, give me a shot. I'd like to prove that it can. So what I'm saying is that we hold on to myths about success and we still want that. We want the big success. We want it overnight. We want it easy and without adversity. We want it to go just the way we planned. And can you see how holding that mindset and living it would not bring us discouragement, disappointment, and sometimes feeling like failures? And it's just not a healthy way. It's not a healthy foundation or mindset, you know, to live our lives and to try and progress and achieve the things that we desire. So today, we're starting a, a series on a book called The 1% Rule uh, by Tommy Baker. And um, I think it's a fabulous, simple system and strategy for success. And it's got three things. Do daily work towards the goal you want. Celebrate the progress that you experience. And, uh, and, then, and then just enjoy the journey. Love the, love the experience. So doing it daily, being focused on what, on what you're doing, and doing it over time, over a period of time, because it takes time uh, to have levels of success. And so it isn't about trying to hit the Grand Slam home run. It is about what are you doing every day? What are the simple steps that you are willing to take? And it, measuring success by the enjoyment of the process and not by what the end result is. Now, there's another book called The Slight Edge, and it says small incremental steps are the thing that will get you further than, than, than trying to have a quantum leap in your life. It's just a smarter thing. It just doesn't sound, we don't take it seriously because it doesn't sound as exciting. You know, it doesn't sound as great as, as we all dream up what we think success should look like and be like. And so the first step is to let go of some idea or belief that we have about success that we're holding on to that might be holding us back. And in its place, begin to reconfigure and rewire our minds to create a system that's healthier, that's more effective, um, and, and creates a, a happier process of us enjoying whatever level of achievement that we want to experience. Now, Tommy... Baker was inspired by two things. The first one was a Harvard Business Review article on a study about motivation. What does it take to motivate? And it was in the workplace. And so they found that the greatest thing of all the motivations, like you know, um, watching a YouTube thing or a TED Talk or all the different ways we could get motivated, you know what said the number one thing to be motivated in the workplace is? Progress. 
to see some improvement, to see some change, to see something get better, even if it's tiny, uh, creates a greater motivation to want to keep going. And the more frequently we recognize progress and improvement, we are more likely to get excited and engaged and get more creative and keep going in the long run and the long term. You know, and, and no matter how small it is, if you learn what not to do, or if you uh, have a better understanding, or you get closer to closing the deal, any of those bits of progress, it's what should be focused on. Because sometimes we, we have a day, we have a little progress, and all we think is, oh, I'm not at my goal yet. Where the flip could be, hey, look at the little bit of progress I made and celebrate that, because that increases our energy, uh, our in, uh, focus, and our enthusiasm about the path of work that we're doing. Let me give you the best example. You remember when Thomas Edison, they said, Thomas Edison, you failed 10,000 times uh, before discovering the filament for the electric light bulb. And his answer was this. He said, I have not failed 10,000 times. I have successfully found 10,000 ways that do not work. <laughs> and I want you to hear how deep and profound this is. Because what he is saying in his, his head, even though he is doing these experiments that were failing, they were bringing him closer to the answer. That even though it didn't work, he eliminated something to help him get a little further. That's the mindset I'm talking about here. Is that when we have that mindset of looking for progress and enjoying the steps and taking them and not just keep looking down the road. Yes, it's out there, but keep enjoying and seeing the progress here. That's what gave him the energy to keep going for 10,000 um, you know, failures, no, it was 10,000 successful discoveries. And so the, the thing about this is, oh, and the second thing um, that inspired him was the Japanese uh, philosophy of Kaizen. Anybody know what Kaizen? It means continuous improvement. The Japanese have a belief that success, the greatest success is about continually improving, continually looking and trying and discovering uh, and bringing about uh, new changes. You know, because again, success isn't just the highlight reel film. It's not just the uh, grand slam home run. Um, it, is, it is the incremental, consistent things that we do in life that brings around changes. And in our own spiritual life, in our own prayer and meditation life, it is that consistency. In our relationship, it's the consistency. In business, it's consistency. If you want to learn a new language, you know, if you want to learn a new skill, it's the consistency over time that brings success. And it's amazing that we human beings fight against it and not want to work with a, a simple yet important natural process. You know, the 1% rule is not a quick fix method. It is a simple, powerful, systematic, progressive way uh, to, to achieve all, anything we want to achieve in any area of our lives. And that the most important thing is we, learn, we need to learn integration. We need to integrate. And, you know, there are three things in any process of learning. And that is knowing, and it is doing, and it is being. And so integration is moving from the knowing to the doing to the being, you know, to, 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 uh, to the mastering. And so, of course, we know knowing is knowledge. It is the stuff that we research. It's stuff we study. It is the content. It is all the information we obser uh, observe and understand and the way that we reason. We have a lot of knowing. We all know a lot. And we know how to do a lot of things to start businesses, to do all kinds of things. We know it, we have that knowledge. But the important thing then, the next step, if we wanna move forward and not be stuck, is the doing, it's the applying, it's the practicing, it's the putting it into action, it's demonstrating it. How many people have at least one thing in your life that you know is good and important to do that you're not doing? Anybody have something you know it's good that you're not doing? You know, and the thing is, Sometimes we'll just not do it because it's hard or not do it because we dislike it, you know, but it is only through the living and the practicing. It's only being in the arena and daring greatly and facing things and failing and missing and trying and working that, that, that we bring things to life to learn and discover and to have greater uh, breakthroughs. It's making the calls. It's doing the exercise. It's sitting and meditating. It's going to the AA meetings. It is doing the work that is needed. Einstein said, nothing happens till something moves. In the book of James, it says, be doers of the word, not just hearers, and you'll be blessed in your doing. 
James also said, faith without works is dead. Paul said, put it into practice and the peace of God will be with you. So the, the important thing to bring things to life, to get things moving and flowing and increasing is, is by taking action, by doing it. And this process is about doing something daily towards what you want to achieve. And the last one is where the magic happens, and that's the being, where we do something so often that we become one with it, that we unify the activity in our spirit and our energy. Remember, I have to mention this before. I'm a big Eagles fan, and Don Henley, in an interview a few years back, said that they were playing their songs better 30 years later after they were hits. 30 years later, we're playing them better. Why? Because after all that time of playing, there's a, it's an understanding and a feeling and an energy of infusing their spirits in what they did. They did it at a level of mastery, and you could feel their mastery in the songs and the quality of their songs. Something happens magically of moving from the doing to the being, but it's because it's a unification of the inner and the outer, you know, of our physical and our spirit becoming one, and there's power there. How many people have heard of the 10,000-hour rule by Erickson? And the idea is that it takes 10,000 hours of doing something to, be, to, to get to the masterful level, the genius level. And I know it sounds like a lot, but the principle behind it is if you keep going, that the action won't just be an action, it'll be a, an expression of yourself. It'll be a oneness of yourself. And something magical and transformational happens when we're willing to invest ourselves in an activity to the point that we become one with it. Baker says that these three phases can exist simultaneously and will repeat themselves as you expand to new levels. Mastery requires repeating the cycles of knowing, doing, and being as you deepen your skill. The interesting thing about this is it's not new. This idea of a process and taking small steps regularly is really a principle of life. When you look at all areas of life, it's all about a process, a process of growth, a process of becoming, a process of change, a process of transformation. You know, for a, a caterpillar to become a butterfly is a process. You know, to learn a skill or a language is a process. Art is a process. To grow tomatoes is a process. Um, to have a baby is a process. All these things, it, I mean, it, it is a part of life. Yeah, and sometimes we challenge it and want to cut corners, and yet this is the way success works. You know, the Bible has so many examples and stories about the whole idea of planting, you know, and growing and harvesting and bearing fruit. In the book of Mark chapter four, it says, for the earth brought forth fruit, fruit of itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. It's describing a process of growth, of growth, of growth. You know, so many times it, it shares about, you know, farmers spreading their seed. You know, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, do you know why they picked a mustard seed and what that's about? Most of us think, oh, it means, oh, you just need a little faith, nothing else. No, the reason is, is a mustard seed is one of the tiniest seeds, but it grows into one of the largest bushes. So the idea about it is that little seed through a process will grow into something greater. And that's what the whole idea is. When you do daily uh, work towards something, when you engage in that process of growth and becoming, it will grow into something great. It will grow into something amazing. And farmers, they know and trust the process, and they work with the process. You never see a farmer standing over the crops thinking, grow, grow, hurry, come on, you're slow, pick up the pace. I know how silly that sounds, but, but it's, it's silly that, that we do the things we do in rushing and forcing ourselves and believing success to be something other than a process. And it's a systematic, simple way. This 1%. Get 1% better every day. And, and, and amazing things will happen. But it does take work. It takes discipline. And we all have that power. We all have that ability. The question is, do we really want and what we want and are we willing to work towards it? Am I willing to invest myself in the daily systematic process of putting some effort and intention into what I want? You know, am I willing to do that? Am I willing to celebrate and rejoice in the process 
and, and enjoy success all along the way. We all have what it takes. The question is, are we willing to do it? Are we willing to put it into action? Second Timothy says, God has not given you a spirit of fear and timidity, but a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. God has not given you a spirit of fear and timidity, but a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. I have a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Let's say that together. I have a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Take a deep breath and breathe that truth into yourself. Now half voice. I have a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Take a deep breath. And I'm just even softer. I have a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Deep breath. And now full voice again. I have a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. We have the power. We have the ability. The question is, are we willing? Hey, have you ever gone to like a seminar and it was really fabulous and you were buzzing on high, another level, you're walking on cloud nine, the energy was so fabulous and wonderful and that energy lasted for a couple of weeks and you were just on such a high, you want to transform every area of your life. You were just so happy. And then three months later, you realize nothing's really changed in your life. And, and it's a pattern that we sometimes do. We get excited, but we don't get the traction by engaging and, and fully actively doing the steps that can make it. And the fact is we can all move the needle. We can all you know, have growth and transformation in our lives. The question is, are we willing to do the work? So here are the four things for this first week. We're going to go deeper in, in, in the next weeks to come. But the first one is, uh, number one is acknowledge and let go of the one belief that you might be having about success that you're holding on to that you know that's good. And just the willingness to let it go and give it to God. Second is trust the process by doing some daily activity towards a goal you already have. So, you know, it's what goal do you have that isn't fully fulfilled yet that you're willing now to consciously do some daily work and activity for it. The third thing is celebrate your progress every day. That however far you moved along, even if it's to learn how not to do something, celebrate, acknowledge what it is, the, the, the progress that you're making. And number four is fall in love with the process. Just love and get excited uh, about being able to do this and, and investing yourself uh, fully in it. And I guarantee you, things will begin to change. They'll begin to open up and transform. And first, it'll be your own joy and your own engagement and excitement, which is the most important thing. And out of that, those little actions will actually have greater and greater impact. And there'll be a compounding benefit to that 1% increase a day. So think of that goal. You've got a goal right now that you haven't fulfilled yet. Think about what it would be like if every day for the next 30 days, you increased by 1% of improvement that you invested for the next 30 days, you know, a conscious activity and focus on the thing you want to do, and that you celebrated your progress every day, and you loved and were engaged in the process. Could you imagine how much further you'd be in 30 days of doing that? Let's all make a commitment to, 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 to put this into practice for the next uh, 30 days. Let us use the power of and the process of incremental action and the power of acknowledging our progress to enjoy this journey and this ride to success by using the principles and the practice of the 1% rule. God bless you all.